Hello folks, welcome to the Age of Asparagus and episode 3.12 of our series. By the end of this video, we'll have a simple title screen and a basic menu. Most of this video is thanks to an old GD Quest tutorial, which I'll link to in the video description. Alright, let's start with a new scene here. We'll create a user interface with a control node. Let's call it title screen. And I'm going to add another control node as a child here, and this is going to be our margins. So it'll allow us to place sub nodes uh, either with them, either full rect, the entire screen, or with margins here. We'll lay out the full rect, and then in our margins node over in the margins in the inspector, we'll set, uh, let's do margins of 20, so the left 20, top 20, and then the right will be negative 20 and bottom negative 20. Now, if you set it up a, a certain way, it will actually change if you change the aspect ratio of your game. So you can see how our title screen is set up like this with a certain aspect ratio or certain resolution in our project settings. We can go to down to the display window here and we have 1024 by 600. So we're going to change this to 1280 by 720. And you can see that our margins here have stayed nice. So when you're playing around with control nodes depending on where they're how they're anchored and what the settings are uh, they can be responsive to you changing kind of the native resolution of your game uh, often however things will just get messed up because it's really hard to I find to pick the exact right anchors for everything to make that happen so like most people suggest you'll want to set the native resolution of your game before you build too far into your titles and screens and stuff okay so now on in inside our margin container We'll create a VBox container to sort out a few things vertically, and we'll fill this out full rect. Um, I'm going to add a few extra margins to this, because we're going to want the title to appear not right at the top. So we'll set the top margin to about 120. Yeah, I think that looks good. So the title would be right. will end up being right there. We'll set the left and right margins to about 100. Uh, so 100 for the left and negative 100 for the right, and we'll leave the bottom where it is. And now in here we're going to add a label, which will be our title. So we'll F2 that and name that title. This is where I had to figure out what do I actually want to call this game because Godot 3 3D game is kind of lame. So I figured it should have something to do with uh, capsules. So I hit up Wikipedia, uh, the capsule article, and it has some other names like a Sphero Cylinder. But one name for it is Stadium of Revolution. And I thought, hey, that would be a pretty cool game if we called it Stadiums of Revolution. Um, and then people who go play this cool sounding game can be all disappointed at uh, what they end up getting. <laughs> so, Stadiums of Revolution will, can be the name of our game. Uh, well, that's kind of lame, isn't it? So let's go down to the fonts here under Custom Fonts. We'll start by loading up the font we've already made. I think that's in our heads-up display here. Yes, Righteous 26. So Righteous Font... 26 size and we're gonna make this unique so we can change it and then save it so I'm gonna click the font here and under the settings I'm gonna say change this to uh, I think like 68 or so is probably good I'm gonna leave it white but I'm gonna give it a green drop shadow going down so under custom constants we'll go uh, shadow offset Y of 8 pixels and then under custom colors we'll give it a shadow color and I'm gonna give it the kind of green color that our capsule zombies have or our green our zombie stadiums of revolution have and that is 195700 I'm sorry because I have uh, the scaling up you can't see that full number there that's 195700 set it to whatever you like you can start seeing it there I'm gonna add a black background later so the contrast will look better so here in the title it's also not centered so let's go up to the top here and align left we will go align center and uh, that's good okay so now we're gonna add a few buttons underneath it so in the VBox container let's add another VBox container to contain our buttons uh, we cannot fill rec this because the title is in there with it so instead what we'll do is we'll go in the size flags we'll tell it to expand vertically to fill out all that size and let's start by adding a button actually maybe we'll call this buttons and then we can add a button we're just gonna use a base uh, we're just gonna add the 2d standard themed button here f2 we'll call this the start button and 
We're, I'm just gonna have some text. I'm not gonna have this button color here. So we'll click flat to get rid of that styling. And we'll add a label to the button. Text will be start. Okay, well, uh, I forgot to save the title font. So let's go back down there to the fonts here. We've changed all these settings and stuff. So let's go here and let's save this now. We'll create a new folder. We'll call it title and menu. And that's just anything title and menu related we can put in there. And then we'll call this one font name. So righteous, righteous font. And we'll give it, uh, what was this, 68. Good. Okay, so now in our label, we can go down to the custom fonts. This is our start button label. And now we'll load up that Righteous 68. We'll make it unique because this is going to be a little bit different. Uh, let's click on the font here. We'll change the size to 48 for the buttons. We're going to, oops, let's go up a little further here to the button. We're going to align them to the center. Uh, we also want to full rect these buttons so that they'll fill up the full area of the start button. But because the text is a little larger, it's going to spill out over top. That's fine for us. I want to do the same thing with the shadow offset, but a smaller text will make this one maybe a little smaller, so it'll be four. And for the colors this time, the shadow color is going to be kind of a plum purpley color, which is 7D1E40. That's like one of the colors of... I picked from the obstacles. Oops, I didn't mean to change the font color there. All right, so now we have a start button. We're going to position these down here with a couple buttons, but maybe I'm going to, let's, before we do this, let's just change this back to button. And for the label for the text, I'm just going to call this label. And that's going to allow us to save this button as a scene, save branches scene, and we'll save it in the title menu. And we'll just call this menu button. So now we have a, a scene that's saved. If we want to go change all our buttons, we can do that in a single place. Okay, so now I'm going to change it to the start button. And we'll change the text of the label, which we can do by now clicking editable children. For convenience, we can call this start. Good. And then I'm going to duplicate this by start button control D. Now this is also a copy of that scene. We'll call this one exit button. Or quit, I guess you could call it exit and we need to sort out this vertical box a little bit so we want the buttons in the middle of this box so we're gonna set this to center and then we want to separate the buttons a little bit so down under custom constants we're gonna change the separation to say something like 60 that looks okay now we might want to add some uh, additional information here copyright or links or studio information. So uh, underneath the margins, I'm going to add a new label here. Uh, I'm going to just put it up there. And I'm going to anchor this to the top right for this label. And for custom fonts again, we can go load up. Let's load up the... Oh, we never saved that font. We should probably save that. Uh, some of those other fonts. So I'm going to make this one unique click the font and this one will set to like uh, 14 maybe and I'll save that one as righteous font 14 and while I'm at it maybe I'll go to the label of our button here and save that one as well nope okay we'd have to go into the start button scene to do that okay let's do that we'll click that oh that's not the label there we go custom fonts and we'll save this as righteous font 48 okay good uh, woo we haven't saved this scene yet so control s here we'll put it in the same thing title screen .tscn. sounds good so back up to our label here and uh, maybe we'll just call this version label to differentiate it I have a little bit of text here which I would like to paste in uh, I'm gonna align it right and then it looks like after I added the text I'm gonna have to re top right it there we go now I just want to add a background get rid of this gray so I have created this screenshot of the game in action I'm gonna take that image you can get it in the video description and I'm gonna drag it down into our title and menu 
Uh, it looks like it appeared there. I'm just going to move that into our title and menu scene. And now we're going to add a texture rect. So we want to do this without the margins. We don't want it. We don't want a little gray outline here. We want this image to take up the entire outline. So I'm going to go up one to the title screen and we'll add a texture rect here. And I'm going to move that up to the top. It's just a little clear that those are on the those are siblings. And then on the texture rect, let's uh, drag that image over to the texture and. I want this to be centered and on the bottom. So on the layout for the texture rec, I'm going to go center bottom. Good. And now the top of this is black. So uh, I just got to set the background to black and then it'll it'll fade nicely. So let's go back up into the project settings. We'll go this time up in rendering. We want uh, the environment and for the default clear color. Let's change that to black. And close that and there we go. Uh, the text is a little hard to read here, white on white. Uh, so I do want to fade this background image a little bit. So on the texture rect, I'm going to go to visibility and under modulate, I'm going to change the alpha to maybe 128, like visibility in half. So it's a little darker, the text stands out and uh, looks good. Now if we run this scene here uh, with F6 or the button guy, um, there's not really any feedback that these are buttons, right? And currently they don't do anything anyway. Um, but we'll come back at the end to clean that up. Let's start, let's make these functional. And we can do that. Let's go into the button scene and we'll add a new script. We can call it menu button. Sounds good. And for each button, we're going to add a export variable called scene to load. And the goal here is that packed scene will be loaded when they click that button. And so for example, uh, for the start button, it would be the game scene. For the exit button, there wouldn't be any scene, so we'll have to handle that. And later on, if you wanted to have an options menu, it could load up whatever scene you dropped into the, the scene to load. Uh, on the button, we're going to do when the button is clicked, or released in this case for button up, we'll connect that to our self. And here, we can just go get tree, where, so we're going to get wherever this button is, and we're going to change the scene to, we have to use the to if we have a packed scene. And we'll change it to the scene to load. Okay, that's good. Now our exit button isn't going to have a scene, so we can probably just quick, quickly handle that now. If we just go, we'll just check if there is a scene to load. If this button does have a scene, then we'll load it. And if not, which is basically only going to be for our exit button. We will quit the game by getting the tree and then quit. Okay, so let's go to our title screen again. And now if we click on our buttons in the inspector, we should see this scene to load appear. So for the start button, we're going to load up our game scene there. And for our exit button, we're going to leave it empty. And we could add more buttons, like I said, with different scenes for options or configuration or whatever later on. So I'm going to save that, control S, and let's see if this works. So first let's see if we can exit. Can't. Uh, can we start the game? Hmm. Did you notice that? Uh, the buttons are tiny and up there. There it is. <laughs> so we're probably going to want to fix that. So let's set a minimum height for these buttons. Uh, so we'll go back to the menu button in the inspector down here we'll go to the rect and we'll set a minimum height on the y to 60 that looks decent i think i just maybe a little higher 70 nope 65 65 is good we'll have to uh reset the size there too good we'll save that and now there we go now our buttons make more sense and <laughs> because of that we're also going to want to change our our separation now because the buttons probably um, something more like 20 or 10. There we go. That seems good. I want to hit that start the title screen and now we get it. Start's gonna work. Okay so our game works. The menus work. Did we exit? We can exit. Now you see that little blue outline that occurred um, when the menu item was selected? So this is some styling we can edit. Uh, because this is pretty static and not very intuitive. 
Um, the other thing is, if I run my game and I hit enter, nothing happens, so it'd be nice to connect up the, a default button that's selected right off the bat. And we can do that by adding a little title screen script. And all that's going to do is in the ready method is we're just going to go get the default button. So let's go to tracker down here. So we're going to go into the margins, vbox container, blah, 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 start button. There it is. And we can just tell it to grab the focus. There we go. And now when we play the game without clicking anything, you can see that's already selected and highlighted. Uh, you, the arrow keys, it's a little more intuitive now that something's selected actually, right? Right off the bat. Um, so now let's just change it slightly and you can fine tune this all you want. Just so I just want like kind of like a black outline here or like a black background for this big long fat button. And I also want the button to be styled kind of the same width of our stadium of resolution text. So we can do that if we go to, let's go back to 2D here. What we could do is we could just shrink, shrink the size of this containing VBox container, which is I think what we'll do. So we just want to adjust the left and right margins. So they squeeze in. We'll go like, what if we try 150 here? Squeeze in that stadium of revolution to fit it exactly. So 175. There we go, that's, that's good. And then the buttons, did they, do we have to adjust those? No, okay. So now you can see stylistically, at least the width of the buttons kind of match the width of the title, which I like better. Um, and as we shrink this, it doesn't work out so well, at least if we shrink it left and right, because really uh, the left and right size is all accounted for. It does work okay if we grow it, at least not too big before it starts looking weird. So I, for a first go at it, it's functional, it works for us. So let's go back to our button scene here. So if we uh, go to the button in the inspector, we can go down to custom styles. Let's change the f one that has the focus. And what we'll do is we'll give it a, a new flat style and then click that in there. And uh, it's going to give us a background color of this gray. And I think if you go back to the title screen here, you're going to see that. There you go. So <laughs> ugly. So instead, but at least you can see it, We'll just change that background color to fully black, but I'm going to give it a something like 128-ish opacity so that we get something more like this. And now it's pretty cool. Um, there's no hover effect that occurs, which would also be nice, uh, but this could be styled endlessly and current. And at this point, I just want it to be basically functional and work. If I go down and I hit enter, it does exit. So that all seems to be good. Okay, so I gotta come back and fix this because here if I go in full screen mode, that's not really what I want. I don't want all the text to be, it looks way smaller. I want it to kind of keep its proportion. So we're gonna go to the project settings and then under the display window here, under the stretch mode, which is down at the bottom, we're gonna change this to 2D. I'll close that. And then now you can see that when we, everything gets stretched out proportionally that's much nicer although our background image is a little low resolution starting to get a little pixely no problem i guess we should also change our main scene uh so that it actually plays our title scene when the game plays so we can do that in the project settings and if in general if we go up to the scroll up to the top to the config application we have a name here now we have a real name stadiums of Re revolution we can go to the run menu here and then let's change from the game. Instead, we'll go to the title screen. So now when we hit the play button, right on. And thanks again to this GD Quest tutorial, which was my main reference.